Yeah, a little surprised by that. That was a little wrinkle thrown in by Chip. I, I don't think any of us saw this coming simply because the coaching staff had been, you know, pretty st- straightforward. They wanted to start him out on the on the outside. And if you think about it, the projected starters are, are Byron Maxwell and Nolan Carroll, and they both have experience a, as slot cornerbacks in the at the NFL level. So you would think you move one of those guys inside, you, you put Rowe on the outside in the nickel, and that would be the logical solution. But, you know, it's still early in camp, and, and Chip was – uh, you know, pretty honest, and he wants to rotate those guys. He wants them to be versatile. He wants them to know all the different positions, and and that's why Rowe is, is is being put in the mix at nickel corner. But let's also remember, it's only after the ACL injury to to Corey Shepard. So so obviously, it wasn't the original plan. No matter what he says, no matter what he spins, uh, but it's interesting. Uh, simply because it, it, it really makes it evident that they don't want to move Maxwell, they don't want to move Carroll, and for that matter, they don't want to move Malcolm Jenkins or, you know, Walter Thurman, uh, safeties who have played the nickel spot before. They want to keep everybody situated where they are, and they want one of these young guys to step up. Now, yesterday you wrote the piece that says the slot spot looks murkier. Does Rowe adding to that mix make it clear or does that make it even more murky no i think it makes it murkier and 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 that's the whole thing you know i i think you know plan number one now that shepherd isn't there is the hope that that jalen Watkins seizes control of the position and, and proves he can play it uh they do have you know some buffer zones if they're forced to make those moves i just talked about you know whether it's uh, moving Walter Thurman down and, and putting in another safety or moving Maxwell inside uh, and putting Rowe on the outside. They're capable of doing it, but it, that's something it, it's pretty evident they don't want to do unless they have to. John, give me your thoughts on Jalen Watkins. Is he a guy that impresses? Is he a guy that has the look of the guy who can take that spot over for Boykin? Well, I think it's interesting. A lot of people, you know, when they're doing their uh, projected uh, 53-man rosters at the opening of training camp, a lot of people left Jalen Watkins off of it because he was kind of in the background. He had fallen back. Uh, the Eagles were much higher on Shepard uh, than they were on him. Now that Shepard's not in the mix, uh, he's getting a second opportunity. Uh, and he's got, you know, a heck of a pedigree at Florida. He was a, a very, very good college player, a very versatile college player. He, he, you know, he played safety and corner. He played the nickel. Uh, so he was able to go all over with the Gators. And maybe that's hurt him a little bit in, in his early NFL career because he really hasn't, you know, latched on to one spot and kind of learned it. Uh, you know, you hate to, to see anybody get injured, uh, but obviously Shepard being out of the mix is going to give Jalen Watkins another chance he might not have had other ones. Yeah, it's some interesting uh, shuffling going on in some other spots, too, one of which is the offensive line. We're all kind of uh, interested about what is going to happen. I guess Barbary is the one guard, uh, and which side is he really – looks like he's kind of fixed in on the left side, um, but the other side – is really where the competition really begins. Who was uh, the man who was getting the most reps today? Uh, today was John Moffitt, uh, and obviously he's you know uh, got a little bit of a pedigree, but he's had a lot of off the field issues. You know, he's a former third round pick uh, from, from Seattle, so you know he's got some talent. But the bottom line is he hasn't played football in two years. Uh, and it just shows that nobody has, uh, you know, taken control of that position because it's been basically a cast of thousands. Uh, you know, uh, Andrew Gardner has, has had first team reps, uh, Dennis Kelly at times. Uh, we talk about Moffitt, even Julian Vandeveld the past two days before today, uh, got first team reps. The hope was coming in that Matt Tobin would be the guy. Uh, and he hasn't done it just yet. So that's one of those positions I think it's going to take virtually the entire preseason, and it truly is an open co- competition between four or five guys. I, I still think Tobin 
is the most, most likely to emerge. Uh, but the wild card would be Moffitt simply because if he can get back uh, to what he was uh, coming out of college at Wisconsin, he's obviously got a little more uh, of a skill set than the other guys who are by and large uh, undrafted free agents except for Vanderbilt, who's you know, a late round pick and has always been at the back end of the conversation. John McMullen's with us. You can read his piece at 973ESPN.com on uh, the slot cornerback position. And, you know, they lose to Corey Shepard, and we talked about the injuries there. Uh, some other injuries at the linebacker spot. You got uh, Kiko Alonso. Do we think that we'll see him play on Sunday? No, I, I would be stunned. He, he missed, I think it was a spit straight practice today. Uh, still going through the NFL's concussion protocol. And, and it, let's face it, there's no reason for a guy like that to to risk, even if he's able to, to get back on the practice field uh, tomorrow, for instance. There's no reason to risk uh, uh, him playing in the first preseason game. Even if he was there completely healthy, uh, he probably only play a series or two. So, it, to me, you just err on the side of caution, wait till week two. Uh, and the Eagles, if there's one position where they have plenty of depth at, uh, it's inside linebacker. Because, you, obviously, you already have Michael Kendricks. Uh, you, you have Jordan Hicks, who's a you know, high draft choice. Uh, Brad Jones, who's cross-training on the inside and outside. So they got plenty of bodies. Uh, to play in the preseason, very deep at that position, and there's no need to risk, uh, you know, forcing Kiko back that quickly. Now you talk about injury. Walter Thurman's a guy who's been hurt a lot during his career. Does he seem like the locked-in guy at safety? Do they consider him the starter? Yeah, that you know, he's been the starter since you know pretty much day one of off off-season activities and. Uh, I think that surprised a lot of people. You know, when they saw the signing, they just assumed that that Thurman, with his history uh, in Seattle specifically, even before he got to the Giants when he was injured last year, uh, he was a heck of a nickelback in that legion of boom. So that was the assumption he was just going to step in there. But the Eagles had a different plan, and this has been going around. I, I talked to Mike Mayock about this, just the nature of the position. Uh, if you think about Malcolm Jenkins, he was a corner coming out of college at Ohio State. And, you know, th- with all the rule changes uh, and with all the, the read option offense was designed to, to create space on the field, uh, it, it's, it's more important to have a guy who can cover on the back end than ever before. And sometimes you give a little up and run support. And that's my biggest concern with Thurman because – if Walter Thurman's going to be in the open field with, you know, pick your name, Adrian Peterson, Eddie Lacy, one of those powerful backs, I don't like his chances uh, in run support. But the Eagles are hardly the only team in the NFL that's going in this direction. They wanted a cover guy back there, and, and Thurman's been very good to this point. Chip Kelly called him his best defensive back uh, to this point. Hmm. Um, he also mentioned, you know, he was asked about Chris Brzezinski, a, a safety. But when he mentioned it, he said it's going to be an interesting battle. You got Jenkins and Maragos and Walt and Chris, and then you throw in Coop and Earl and Reynolds. When you throw in guys, it doesn't sound like they're a big factor. A lot of people thought Earl Wolf might be the competition or even win that job. Does he seem like a guy who could be on the outside looking in? Yeah, it could be. Uh, you know, the one thing that could save him, we talked about inside linebacker, maybe the the uh, the opposite of that and, and is the safety position as far as depth goes because there is none. Uh, basically, there's Jenkins and Thurman, and, and then you mix in people. You mentioned Brzezinski. Guys like that and Maragos are really uh, more special teams players than anything else. So Earl Wolf, if he was healthy – uh, if he was able to be out there, but he's just, you know, missed most of the off season stuff with the microfracture surgery. He's back on the field. He's practicing, but you could tell the Eagles are, are frustrated with him and that he was cleared a lot uh, sooner than he was able to start doing stuff. And, and, and the coaches are, are concerned with his ability to play with pain and, and whether or not they can count on him from week to week. Uh, but, you know, he's he's a natural safety. And he might be 
the only really natural safety this team has. Because as I said, Jenkins and Thurman are converted corners. Uh, then you talk about basically special teamers. And a guy like Watkins and, and Ed Reynolds, uh, Watkins has to concentrate on the slot now. Ed Reynolds hasn't done much. So depth-wise, that's a big concern for the Eagles, that position. Uh, let's look at the quarterback here. Obviously, Bradford, um, he did not commit to playing time for him on Sunday, but is the indication that Bradford wants to and will play? Well, he talked about it today, and, and he kind of, you know, left it off on the coaches and said he'll do whatever they ask. But, I mean, let's face it, we're over a weekend. He's taken the vast majority as a 90-plus percent of, of first-team reps, uh, you know, over Mark Sanchez. And that's the most encouraging sign is the day-to-day stuff with the knee. He's been able to go out there every single day and practice with the first team. So, you know, whether he's out there for four plays or one series – that sort of depends on, on Chip's, you know, philosophy in the preseason and whether you want to even throw out uh, your starting quarterback and, and put him at risk for anything. I, I think it would be logical simply because Sam hasn't played all that much uh, over the past two seasons, and you got to knock some of the rust off, and the preseason is part of it. John, what's your take on Sam Bradford? It seems like a lot of people, you know, thought he had a really good week of practice. He looks healthy. Uh, you know, is there, in your opinion, a uh, a lot of difference between him and Foles? I mean, how do you look at Bradford after seeing Foles the last couple of years? Well, I, I think people rightfully so uh, fall in love with his arm talent because he, he is one of those guys that can throw the football like few others. Uh, so that part of it, uh, I always say he looks like an all pro in seven on sevens. He really does. Uh, and then he becomes a bit of a different player when he's in team drills. And obviously there's no hitting at Eagles camp. So it's just thoughts and, and nobody can go after the quarterback, but you can just see he's not as comfortable. And, and that stems from the injuries and the fact that he didn't have the greatest offensive lines in, in St. Louis. And you could see some of that. Uh, gun shyness, so to speak. Uh, that's my biggest concern, and that's another reason why I think he needs reps in the preseason because he's got to get used to 11 on 11s. But when he has a clean pocket and he can throw the football, uh, obviously his skill set's better than Nick Foles. The, the problems arise with the other stuff, and you rarely have a clean pocket in the NFL. Yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Um... You know, a, a lot of people look at uh, Sam and the arm strength. It, you know, is that noticeable? Is that a big time difference? And if it is, how does that, in your opinion, help them uh, in certain areas? You know, in terms of maybe red zone or things, or is that just something that, uh, hey, this guy's a strong arm, the other guy doesn't? Yeah, I mean, it helps, particularly today. I mean, he was great at, at back shoulder throws today, and that's one thing that he can be a lead at, and that could be a, a red zone. Uh, really something that could help the Eagles, uh, especially when you look at a guy like Jordan Matthews who has such great size. Uh, he can put it on uh, you know, that back shoulder, and there's nothing. If you watch Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, uh, he's the best ever at that. And, and when you make that throw, there is nothing the defensive back can do if you throw it properly. That's the big advantage I see in Sam Bradford over, say, in Nick Foles or even – the other guys here, you know, Sanchez, uh, Barkley, obviously Tim Tebow, uh, that's where it really sets himself apart, where he can set the football in those tight windows. And that, of course, always helps in the red zone. So that you project that out, you kind of see where Chip Kelly's got his thinking and thinks if everything clicks, you could have a big upgrade with this player. But then again, you can't just ignore his history with the Rams. And I always say the elite quarterbacks, and you can fill in their name, whoever you want to mention, Brady, Manning, Breeze, Rodgers, whoever, uh, they make others better. I didn't see Sam Bradford do that a lot in St. Louis. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I guess uh, some people would say, what, what did he have to work with down there, the offensive line? Not a lot of talent. And I guess some people would say, well, who's the Eagles' talent that he has to throw with? I think that's what we need to find out about, Sam. Uh, was it a lack of talent down there? that he had to work with, or is it his lack of talent that uh, held him back? I think that's what we'll really find out here in Philadelphia for 
Sam Bradford, John McMullen's with us here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. You can see John's stuff at 97.3 ESPN.com. He's got a piece up right now about the Eagles cornerback situation. I want to ask you about Brandon Graham. He had an interesting comment late last week that he said he wanted to get 32 sacks, two per game. Um, he signed that deal, but it seems like he's been kind of under the radar this camp. Uh, how is he fitting in as now the every down player? Well, you know, I don't think you should have any concern about Brandon Graham. He, he's one of those guys who is a, a great natural pass rusher. I think he's the best natural pass rusher on this team. Uh, you know, 32 sacks, that's silly. That's not going to happen. But, you know, he can, if there's one thing he can do, he can set the edge, and that's what Chip Kelly kind of talked about today. He's a very strong guy. Uh, I, I find it, you know, kind of shocking he hasn't gotten on the field more before this and I, I think there was a lot of, of obviously goodwill built up by Trent Cole while he was here and rightfully so because in his prime he was a tremendous player but I, I think about two years ago Graham kind of passed him uh, 